કઈ નહીં ફર્સ્ટ અહીંયાથી છે હા સેકન્ડ સેકન્ડ ઇન અ લેપટોપ થી પેલો હા ઓકે વાંધો નહીં એ તો કેબલ જ ચેન્જ કરવાનો હા જો લાગેલો છે વાયર હા હા તો કાઢી નાખ્યો છે વાંધો નહીં રવા દે આના પછી છે ને એટલે વાંધો નહીં જે અત્યારે જેનું છે ને તેને કહી દેજે કે આ ટીવીમાં જોઈએ પેલો લેપટોપમાં છેડતા નહીં હા અહીંયાથી કરે હા અહીંયાથી નહીં ભાઈ ત્યાં ઊભો રહીને વાત કરશે ને કોની વાત કે આના પછીનું છે એની ને ફર્સ્ટ આ છે ને હા એ તો એ પેલામાં છેડછાડ નહીં કરે કે આ મારું નથી ને આ ક્લિકર આપવાનું યાદ રાખજો ચાલુ કરીને નેક્સ્ટ આ બેક ને આ પોઈન્ટર આ ચાલુ કરે તો આ પોઈન્ટર છે નેક્સ્ટ બેક આને પકડે તો બ્લેક સ્ક્રીન થઈ જાય એટલે આ કેવાનો આટલો જ્યુસ કરે નહીં સબ રિક્વેસ્ટ ડાલા તા મેર કો બહોત ઇમ્પોર્ટન્ટ કામ તા એક કોલ તા બેંક કે સાથ સારા अरे उसने अपना इस पे दिखाया तो उसका उठा इधर अरे उठाने को नहीं आता क्या कॉल क्यों करता है ओके दबाने का ना टिक मार हाँ आंसर इज आंसर रखो ना मैं देता ठीक वो केबल लगा हुआ रहेंगे यहाँ से मैं चेंज कर दूंगा हाँ लेकिन आपका एम टी है ना एक एक्सेलर आपने निकाला है ना आपको कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है माइक चेक कहाँ से आया आपके ओके आपका चैनल बंद कर रहा हूँ आपका चैनल बंद कर दिया अब बात कर लो Yes, I think we can uh, continue with the next session. First of all, I would like to invite the expert panel for this session, Dr. Yamin from Indonesia, uh, Dr. Pier Francesco Agostini from Netherlands, uh, Dr. Bagarta, Dr. Sharma, and Dr. Kumar. So uh, first of all, uh, we'll have an opportunity to hear the presentation from Dr. Kumar. So he will share with us his experience with uh, currently available by resorbable scaffold. Dr. Kumar. Well, so good afternoon. Uh, I'm Dr. Viveka Kumar. So I'll be speaking on our experience of 
absorbable scaffolds, including our trial, which we were part of the MERIS 100 trial. And uh, I don't have any conflict of interest to report. If you look at the background wise, the bioabsorbable scaffold is a revolutionary therapy, though off late, you know, some of the trials like absorb two and three data has casted its shadow over the, you know, promising technology, but still uh, we have to go a long way. Uh, the first generation <coughs> BRS are not user friendly and hence difficult to apply to the real world patient population. And the the issues which we faced, in fact, there was a Can you hear you know, me? live case also today morning. You know, thick can struts you hear me? and Hello? high profile is, is something. Hello, can which, you hear me? Uh, you know, Hello, can you hear uh, me? Limits the uses in every lesion and every operator. Hello, Hello can you hear me? Uh, you know, tips and tricks of the implantation has to be there. there. Yes, and can then you hear me? characteristic is also Hi. not as Hello? familiar. People are not Hello? as familiar as with the. Uh, metallic DES, radio opacity is again Hello, an can issue, you hear me? and uncertain radial strength, so time would tell, and, and some of the data Suji. are promising, but Suji, still hello. it's not yet there to be used in every case, and scaffold thrombosis, especially after the data of absorb 2 and absorb 3 long-term data has not been really as promising as the, uh, it, you, you know, uh, uh, was thought to be. So Meres 100 uh, Hello. was Hello. one of the stent first absorbable scaffold which was developed in India by Merrill Life, Life Sciences. And if you look at the, it was on the similar, uh, you know, stent Hello. platform which is there with the biomime and it has got, you know, closed cell at the end and open cell in the middle. And the backbone of PLLA which is 100 micrometer strut thickness and it's drug coated with serolimus which is 1.2 five microgram per millimeter square and then it has got optimal side branch access also the, the 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 fear of the side branches getting closed off because the strut thickness is lesser with this and then you have the you know radio opaque markers at the end so the strut thickness and crossing profile if you compare it with the resolute and with the meres you can see that there is hardly any significant difference. So a strut thickness of integrity resolute is almost 90 microns, whereas the Meres 100 is 100 microns. And then crossing profile is also, you know, as good as uh, integrity. So that is why it's much, uh, you know, unlike our experience with the uh, Abbott uh, scaffold, it's less thick and the crossing profile is better. and it would be much more trackable and we will show in due course that in our experience of, you know, which we did almost 15 cases in Meris 100 trial, uh, the, the results were pretty good. So radio opacity was one of the issues with the uh, bioabsorbable scaffold, the uh, absorbed from the Abbott. So here that thing has been taken care of partially because it could be see both the ends there uh, to enhance the visibility. It gives sense of virtual tubing because there are three uh, strategically placed radio opaque markers of platinum. So there is high operator comfort levels are there and couplets of triaxial radio opaque markers at the end of the scaffold also makes, you know, not only uh, fluoroscopically much easily visible, but also if you can see in the imaging technique which is there, the OCT, that shows that it looks much more and easily visible than the, than the uh, Abbott uh, scaffold. This design of this study was first in human. It was safety and efficacy uh, in patients with single de novo coronary lesion in up to two vessels treated by a single Meres 100 scaffold up to 24 millimeter length in 108 patients, so total 108 patients were there, which was, you know, some of them had you know, uh, study with the imaging technique, both intravascular ultrasound and OCT, and quite a few of them were without any imaging technique on the uh, operator's uh, choice only, and the data had to be collected up to three years of all the patients, so one year data of all 108 patients has been completed, and some of the patient has, you know, got two years data also, which will be the angiographic data in these patients. So six month data of all the patient has been completed. One year data is again uh, 
uh, completed in all the patients. In fact, recently, just uh, one week back, we had one patient who had uh, two years completion where we did a check angiogram and uh, he had proximal LED uh, scaffold which had reached nose and we, we, had to treat it, we had treated it with the biomime. Slides are not moving, can you? Next slide, please. So in this, the key eligibility criteria the study had, of course, the age 18 to 65 years, up to two lesions in native arteries. One lesion per target vessel was allowed, and the artery the reference vessel diameter had to be 2.75 to 3.5 millimeter, and lesion length had to be discrete, less than or equal to 20 millimeters, and stenosis had to be significant, that is, uh, equal to a more than 50 percent and less than 100 percent. But exclusion criteria was that patient who had got acute myocardial infarction within seven days, those who had got prior revascularization, significantly low ejection fraction, that is, less than 30 percent, or patients who had complex lesion in the form of left main osteal disease, significant calcification and very tortuous lesions and also bifurcation lesions were excluded. And these are the sites and from Max Hospital we were one of the recruiting centers and we had included 13 patients in this trial. Baseline demographic, again, you know, the it's like a garden variety cases where uh, single or double vessel disease were only included and uh, patients had uh, some of them had, uh, you know, most of them had uh, stable angina and some of them had unstable angina and silent ischemia also and ejection fraction was of course more than 35 percent in all cases. And the variable of, you know, 168 patients with 116 lesions were treated and all the arteries, 60 percent of them were understandably LAD and 11 percent were circumflex and 29 percent of RCA and the uh, almost 99% success rate of delivery of the device was there. Next slide, please. So clinical endpoint at one year, so we had looked at MACE and more importantly with the recent, you know, reports of increased scaffold thrombosis in, uh, uh, you know, absorbed stent, the scaffold thrombosis was also very eagerly looked at this and that was none whatsoever at the end of one year follow-up and no cardiac death in any of the patients was reported. Next slide please. And QCA analysis also was quite favorable post-procedure and six months follow-up QCA analysis also there was not much of late limb loss and uh, the next slide please. Late lumen loss, if you could see that in scaffold uh, and in segment, uh, that was uh, quite uh, promising. There was, and then proximal edge and distal edge, again, there was no significant difference. Next slide, please. So OCT quantitative assessment was also done in at six months, and mean abdominal scaffold area was, uh, you know, if you look at there, there was hardly any statistical difference between post-procedure and six months follow-up. So that again showed that its uh, performance in six months time is very good. And percentage of covered stent was almost 99.3%. So that was again quite promising. And again, uh, some of the uh, imaging technique in some of the patients was with the intravascular ultrasound also. Next slide, please. So there were a few case examples. You could see that one of the patients had, you know, 53-year-old male diabetic, hypertensive, no family history, non-smoker, had stable angina. So this patient had baseline OCT done, and after that it was pre-directed, and then adequate bed preparation. So all the uh, steps of, uh, you know, BRS implantation were followed, and then the implantation of the stent was done, and then six months follow-up. So baseline OCT did show this, and you can see that at six months still the scaffolds were not completely absorbed. So that was the six months OCT follow-up. Uh, I think, yeah, so this is one patient who had, you know, you could see that 49-year-old uh, diabetic, hypertensive, so this patient again had an <coughs> stent in the uh, right coronary artery. And then CT coronary angiogram also, if you look at the one year follow-up, that looks pretty clean. You could see the, the uh, markers and the uh, Timigate 3 flow in the vessel. I think there's some slide issues. Next slide, please. 
So this is the patient who had, uh, you know, one year CT coronary angiogram, which showed uh, fairly good uh, uh, late outcome also. Next. So one year follow-up uh, CTA analysis was done in uh, patients there also the outcome you could see was pretty good. Next. So in conclusion, MERES-1 trial for the next slide. So this study uh, for the first in human evaluation of the thinner strut second generation scaffold MERES-100 BRS demonstrated high acute success, very low MERES rate and no scaffold thrombosis that was very important considering the recent uh, you know uh, incidences of high stent thrombosis of uh, abort vascular scaffold multimodality vascular imaging are consistent in demonstrating high efficacy of meres 100 brs up to one year qca at six months low late lumen loss is there oct at six months virtually complete strut coverage is there iOS at six months showed sustained mean flow area and very low percentage of volume of the and CTA at one year show low mean area stenosis. So it's, it's a something which is a very promising technology and probably I think one of the uh, adverse outcomes in the current generation uh, uh, scaffold uh, from Abbott would be, we can be attributed to the very high or uh, you know uh, thick strut and that would probably take longer time to be reabsorbed and probably uh, that led to the uh, you know more uh, adverse outcomes especially the strength thrombosis but still early days and we need to uh, you know do further trials like the trials which are in the pipeline um, from the Merrill life sciences also that will answer the question whether this is going to you know uh, be a reality or still it will show the promises only thank you so this is the future trial. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much. It was a really great overview. So I think in total, around uh, out of 108 patients, there were 30 patients who had OCT follow-up. So it was like patients who have at index uh, OCT done first during the recruitment, all of them had mandatory to get OCT done in the follow-up also. Those who were followed up, you know, the in index uh, procedure was done with IVAS, so only those were followed up with the IVAS. And the one which we had done with the uh, uh, mm, no imaging that were, uh, you know, at the operator's discretion. So one of the patients were at the end of two year, one month, we had done uh, proximal LED re-stenosis. There the index event, uh, no imaging was done. And when he came there uh, at two years, because his one year angiogram was absolutely fine. Angiographically, there was no re-stenosis. At two year angiogram, he showed around 80% re-stenosis in the mid segment of the scaffold, which we treated and we did the intravascular ultrasound also. And uh, that showed just the fibrotic significant fibrotic plaque in the middle segment of the scaphole. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, <laughs> the next speaker is Dr. Marcos Ortega from Ecuador. He's probably the most, uh, has the most uh, significant experience with MERES implantation as well. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Marcos Ortega. I am from to Guayaquil, Ecuador. I am work in the public hospital in Guayaquil, Ecuador. I do not have uh, any conflicts of interest to report. Introduction to ES. ES is a multidisciplinary public hospital with 
416 beds. Catch Lab holds annually 600 PCIs, 80 STEMI interventions, 22 tabbing, 120 peripheral interventions per year. Uh, safety concerns with uh, first generation of bioabsorbable vascular scaffold have prompted the development of next generation of this device. Focus of thinner struts and faster resorption time. Recently developed the MERES 100 MERES Life Science is a Sirolimus Eluthin BRS, which is a build of a thin stroke 100 micron PLA polymer with a hybrid cell design. There are couples of three axial radio pack markers of either and to facilitate scaffold positioning and post dilatation. Bioreabsorption is expected to occur within two years. We sought to evaluate the performance of this device, the treatment of real world less select patients. This, uh, this is a uh, design of MERES. Methods, a, pro a prospective single center registry included patients treated between August 2016 and June 20, 2017. The exclusion criteria were cardiogenic shock in stem restenosis and target lesion of left main and by bypass graft. The MEDES 100 size were available in 2.5 and 3.5 millimeters and up to 40 millimeters in length. All procedures were uh, guided by OCT. Primary endpoints include procedure success and one year maze rate. Nine OCT assessment in part of the secondary endpoint. This is a baseline demographic. This patient is uh, the number of patient is 34 patients. Um, diabetes mellitus in uh, 44 patients and clinical presentation initial is uh, angina instable 30 percent. The characteristics in the lesion is a procedure and procedure. Uh, the more common vessel is a LAD 44 percent. The present is the calcium is a uh, 37 Person in moderate presence is the calcium. The lesion per patient is one uh, more and less uh, 0.02. 41 BRS deployed. And 100 patients uh, have a post dilatation. The clinical outcome in this registry is uh, a good uh, outcome. Uh, the one patient is a thrombosis of a stain because uh, the patient is continued dapped after one month uh, of uh, tra treatment. The result is, is a total of 34 patients underwent PCI with 41 MERES 100. Most patients were male with mean age of uh, 66 years and 45 patients of di diabetics. Non-state elevation AMI was the initial clinical presentation in 30% of the case. While LAD was the most frequent target vessel, 44%, device success was achieved in 97 of the case. In the hospital phase, Macy rate was zero. During, during the clinical follow-up period, a single case of BRS thrombosis was observed in a patient world who discontinued the DAP in the first month after the procedure. This is a case, uh, this case is a um, first case with uh, Merez in Guayaquil. This uh, LAD, uh, RCA, and the CTO and distal uh, ventricular posterior. And the lesion is the middle uh, RCA. This is a uh, final result. Biomine, biomine in this uh, posterior ventricular and the MERES in the middle artery.
This is a, a final OCT. In the distal segment, uh, this VRS is mal a position. But uh, the follow-up, the nine months, in this OCT is a good uh, coverage though of strokes. This is a second case. Uh, this case is, is a first use the merits of new size in the world. Uh, the LED lesion in the middle LED and uh, LCX. Deploy the merits in 3.0 by 40. And LCX merges 102.75 by 14. Conclusion, preliminary results of merges 100 BRS experience show an excellent acute performance of this novel next generation, Ding Strut BRS. Late clinical follow-up combined with nine months OCT evaluation will add important information on this novel device. Thank you for your attention. Uh, my recommendation use the, the MERES is a good predilatation with no comply balloon. The liberation of MERES is uh, no sequential. It's quickly, 14, 16, and then uh, OCT because um, the coverage stress in the, in the uh, vessel and um, use uh, non-comply balloon at high atmosphere, 24, 24, 26. Okay. And do, do you have some, uh, some experience with prosthetic lesions? Uh, yes. Uh, in this case, it's a good predilatation non-comply balloon, 40, 16, uh, undeployed merez. Un good preparation for implantation of MERES. Thank you. Thank you. So if there are no more questions, now we can uh, go to Professor Santoso. Professor Santoso, you are live now, so we can see you, and uh, we are heading over to handing over to the Professor Kedev. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, we would like to review the result of the first case. Uh, if I may, uh, Sugi, Sugi, Sugi. And then uh, I will show the NQ and also the uh, OCT 
after stamping. Sugi tolong kasih tahu. Hey, Sugi tolong kasih tahu. Uh, don't show this, uh, Palin. You, you show the yeah, first okay. case. The first case. The first case. Yes. Mana Sugi? No. Udah ya Sugi? Ya, ya, ya. Ya, Sugi. Ready, ready. Oke. Okay. Sugi, okay. okay. uh, can you see? Can you see the picture? Yes, yes, we can see distal of two marginals. Oke, okay. so we stand the distal of two marginal uh, uh, where we find the distal dissection, at dissection with uh, biomime uh, through 2.75 by 13. Uh, I must admit that the uh, introduction of this stand through the uh, previously implanted uh, scaffold, mirror scaffold, is very easy. Then uh, I take care uh, to put the stand as such as I, I cover the whole uh, interaluminal hematoma. Uh, in order not to prevent the uh, hematoma to propagate uh, downstream and close the vessels. As you may see, have seen here, this is the OCT findings. Uh, the stand is well placed and uh, the well opposed to the vessel wall. I think Palin will explain uh, the result of this OCT to you. Uh, on top, uh, you see the 3D, 3D uh, picture and on the right, you see cross-sectional view. Uh, there is a little bit of dissection. This is uh, of uh, no clinical significance at all. Uh, Falin, please. The OCT, you can see, is very well opposed and there is no any malapposition. As we play towards the proximal, as you can see, all is very well opposed and the media is all it's very touch the media. Yeah. And we are moving towards the dissection area earlier that is being covered by this uh, stand and it's acceptable, it's less than 0.2 mm. From here, there's the only place that is not being covered. So throughout the whole uh, finding of OCT, it's very well distributed and as you can see, it's very beautiful, implanted, and the total length is about 40, 41. And the MLA is very healthy at a 4.4 with a very, very small area of stenosis area of 15.9%. Uh, so uh, uh, you will appreciate that there is still some residual dissection, but this is uh, very minimal and not as deep and as extensive as before. Yeah, only 0.2 mm. Uh, to me, this is a satisfactory result. So I would like to have your expert opinion about this. Any suggestion? Oh, this is a uh, fly through. Palin, can you explain? Yeah, the fly through I think is, a, is, a, is the residual hematoma what we see behind the... So there is, there is a gap between the two stands, very little bit, but there is a gap. I think there is no overlap. Correct There's me. Yes, no a little bit. Inadvertently, uh, yes. Uh, so if, if you I stop the OCT now, a little bit further, yeah. This we see basically no struts at this level. Correct. And we see very Come deep, a, a, a dark uh, uh, rim. And that's probably the, the residual uh, hematoma Second. that is totally squeezed, uh, right. but it's very far away from the lumen. So it's, uh, in my opinion, this hematoma will, will resorb and will don't give any, any problem. So I think it's a very good result. Appreciate it so much. It's actually side by side. Can you see the final result, uh, uh, the final angio result? So get the final angio result. You see also here there is some, uh, some residual uh, very deep uh, hematoma. There's much less than, than before putting yes, the, much, the second much stand. Less. It will I feel probably resolve uh, in, the, in, the, in time. 
I feel mu uh, much more comfortable to see this result than before. You, you, did, you didn't touch the side branch, right? No. And what's the reason because of the Timmy tree flow? Or would you consider doing something in the side branch? I mean, I'm asking you, but I cannot <laughs> ask, ask the others. Oh, no. Uh, uh, I don't think that I want to do to, to, uh, too aggressive uh, PCI. Considering that uh, in that particular uh, site, uh, we have scaffold. Of yeah. course, uh, we want to treat that, uh, we can. Uh, we are able to introduce a wire, uh, it's not a problem. And then inflate the balloon there. And we are, according to the Benz test, uh, we are able to inflate the balloon to uh, 10 atmosphere without uh, being afraid of inducing uh, strut fractures. But, uh, Considering that this air, the, the area, the territory is not that much, so I don't think that uh, it's worth trying. And otherwise, uh, I may also induce another problem in the um, in the main uh, in the uh, scaffold itself. We used to learn that the enemy good is perfect. This is uh, not much of difference as compared to uh, the first angle that we saw. So I don't see that uh, we worsen the, uh, the condition. Turun dikit, turun dikit. Kopinya, belakang. Any suggestion? Tekan, belakang, tekan. Tekan yang bulat itu, tekan dalam, putar. Ya, yang, yang, nah, tekan dalam. Tekan dalam, putar, putar. If you agree with this uh, result, then we move to the next case. Yeah, okay. Shall we move to the next case? Oh, do you hear us? Yes, yes. Hello? I don't hear you all. Okay, Hello? Uh, whether, whether you are considering some uh, follow-up on this particular patient in terms of six months, nine months, uh, OCD angio? Yes, uh, I completely agree with uh, your advice. I think uh, for complex cases, uh, we normally incline to do a more rigid uh, follow-up. And also, we like to put the patient on uh, dual, stronger dual antiplatelet medications. For example, Takagrel instead of uh, Covidogrel. And also, uh, tomorrow we will check the uh, Verify Now uh, to make sure that the patient is not resistant to uh, antiplatelet medications and uh, we will put the patients on dual antiplatelet medications for at least uh, one year of course uh, uh, one year or even more of course uh, there is no hard data to tell us that uh, that this is a, a good strategy but uh, anyway it is probably much safer because you know uh, currently we have reports of uh, late or even very late thrombosis associated with scaphoid test. If you agree with this, uh, can accept this result, then we will move to the next case. What do you think? Uh, I don't hear you. C could you hear us? Yes, yes, we are, we are with you and we are looking forward for, a sec for the next case. Okay, uh, let me introduce uh, the next case. Sai Ben. Uh, uh, Dr. Lina will, will pre present to you the next case. This is a, this is an, this is even more complex case as compared to the first one. I am just wondering whether you agree that we will uh, fix this case with uh, scaffold, or should we do uh, otherwise? Okay. Uh, please follow carefully. The case two is uh, left vein and trifurcation. The history of recent onset of angina with the risk factor hypertension, dyslipidemia. He has a GBS, Guillain-Barre syndrome, for more than five years ago. 
and the phys physical uh, examination is normal and ACG with the ST depression fever to uh, feces. The accessory and echo is normal. Corona angiography with a left main in distal, uh, 50%. LAD with a osteal, 50% stenosis, then 80% stenosis in the proximal. And LCS with a long segment, 90, uh, 50 to 90% in the mid distal segment and 90% in the osteal of the marginal branch. RCA with the osteal 90% stenosis, then diffuse stenosis in the proximal part and the mid-distal segment. The treatment is normal with the cropidogel aspirin, nitrate, tafedirol, rofusatastin, and pantoprazole. Strike, please. Next. You will see here uh, we already plan, uh, done the PCI two weeks ago uh, with uh, overlapping in biomin uh, in RCA with the two stand in proximal and the uh, distal and slide. You will see that the very nasty looking lesion. Uh, uh, spanning from the osseum, right from the osseum to the very distal end of the right corner artery. Of course, we cannot fix uh, this all, so we just fix this with the three overlapping uh, uh, stands. Uh, in the most proximal, we use a tapered stand, the bimimorph, 3 o by 25, and then we flare the, uh, the osseum with a bigger balloon. And, and the result is uh, very much uh, acceptable. And, and Yes. And then for the LED, we also fix uh, with the drug eluting stand 2.5 to 24. Another by mime. Okay, slide. We leave the left main as it is. Slide, next slide. This is the result, the good result in LED. Now that's and uh, where we are. Now, uh, we, today we want to face the FCS with the Saiban osteal astenosis also with the three Saiban Saibrensis. Right? You see and that's the uh, left back, hand. back, back, back. Can, can we go back? Can we go back? Okay. Yes. No, Play. no. Yeah, yeah. Jalan yang kedua. Yeah, this. Okay, if you uh, look at the LCX, the LCX is diffusely diseased. And the side branches, uh, there are uh, several side branches, but the osseum of the side branches are all uh, significantly narrowed. So suppose we put a scaffold there, or even stand, there is always a risk that we may close the side branches. Of course, we, wanna, we, we, will, we would not like to have uh, uh, a perfect tube with metallic tube or plastic tube with all, uh, uh, well, uh, at the same time, sacrificing all the side branches. Okay, next slide. Next. So these are the issues. With the DPU stenosis, where all the side bands osteal are stenosis, strategy for the BRS implantation, diffuse region, how about the chance of closing some of all the side branches. Do we have to treat the left main bifurcation, the strategy for BRS implantation for the left main or the bifurcation stenosis? And then, right? Next. And implantation of a BVS in a small vessel is associated with the higher TR, TRL and scaffold thrombosis. The strategy for the BRS implantation for the small vessel is allowable. So you see the distal end of the cirque has, uh, is uh, relatively smallest. So uh, we would like to have your uh, expert opinion. Uh, what should we do? Should we send uh, this case to our surgical colleague or can we fix the problem ourselves?
you want to see the film one more time, uh, we are more than happy to show that. Yeah, so I think uh, we need to assess the uh, distal left main because the hostile LED looks significant in one of the views. So we need to define whether there is uh, any significant problem or not. And then uh, if, if that is not significant, then I think we can address the circumflex and be done with that. So we can go with a BRS in circumflex if that's the case. But the location, uh, if we need to address the austral LED and distal left main, then obviously the BRS would not be a good strategy to go with. Any other opinion? Yeah. I, I think uh, in, in my center, this patient would have gone right away for surgery. We wouldn't have started uh, doing PCI. But uh, I think now you, now you started and I think you have to finish the job uh, with PCI, otherwise uh, it's, uh, it's kind of hybrid and uh, it's not good. I, I think uh, I agree with uh, Dr. Kumar that uh, the, the issue is, uh, is to understand whether you have to treat the left main. If you have to treat the left main, I would uh, start with the left main so that then you have the, the, the open access uh, or uh, better access to the, to the CERC. I wouldn't, I, it's a bit counterintuitive. Majority of people say start distal and come back, but here you have a left main problem. And if you halfway in the treatment of the CERC, you have some issues in the left main and you don't fix it, can degenerate more easily. So I would, uh, I think I would, uh, based on the images I saw, I would start treating the left main because for me it's significant, the left main. And then I would take okay. on the circ, and the circ, uh, it's, it's also not easy because you have two big branches that you have to protect and you have to keep open. So the reason why we didn't send the patient to our surgical colleague is because the disease process is very extensive uh, up to the very distal end, uh, very close to the distal uh, segment of uh, major fat cells. This is the main reason. So even though the patient is probably graftable for some fat cells, uh, the result may not be suboptimal. I'm not uh, arguing that uh, stand, stand or scaffold, this may also have uh, other problem uh, uh, by itself. But uh, of course, uh, this is uh, still one option. And regarding uh, assessment of the left main, I would like to ask your expert opinion. Uh, how should we assess uh, this left main? Should we use FFR, IFOS, or OCT? I'm personally in the left main big fan of IVUS for better size. So I, I tend to do in all the left main that I treat always uh, IVUS if I have uh, time and, uh, and uh, if the patient is not an acute patient, of course. So I, w I would definitely consider IVUS. From a video, so yeah, another not opinion. It seems so a yeah, very, very reasonable strategy because when you are going to use IVUS for left main, you can use the same imaging for, uh, for BRS, for distal mid-distal circumflex. Thank you so much. Any other questions? Any other, uh, any no, other I opinion? Think, I think uh, IVAS would be the gold standard, and we have a lot of data about IVAS in the left main, so I would go for IVAS definitely. But as I said before proceeding, we need to make sure that left main is fixed and then only we proceed further. Okay. So uh, I will let you know what uh, we have done so far. Uh, we put two wires, uh, one in the LED and one in the circ. Can I have the next, uh, Angel? I need next slide, I think. Next slide, I think. Can I have the next slide? Okay. Oh, no, 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 Okay, next video, next angel, okay. Next angel, please. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we, the, bukan. Yang ada wire yang masuk. Ini udah 17. Wire already. Bukan, 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 bukan. Okay, number lima dulu dah, number lima. Number lima. Naik ke atas. Naik ke atas. 
Naik ke atas. Oke, okay, dah. Oke, okay, looking from this uh, spider view, the lightning doesn't seem to be uh, that critical. So it is probably an eccentric uh, narrowing, and also in the uh, uh, caudal view, uh, mundur satu film, mundur satu. Okay, it is uh, narrow. The distal bifurcation side is narrow, but uh, not very critical. So uh, next. Next, next. Okay, so we use IFOS uh, because uh, if we plan to do uh, to implant BVS, normally we use IFOS. Uh, of course, uh, from time to time we use. Uh, eh, sorry, OCT. Of course, from time to time we use also IFOS, but uh, we prefer uh, IFOS in this uh, particular case uh, because we want to use. Uh, eh, sorry, uh, OCT. Because we want to use the OCT for the uh, yeah. uh, circ assessment. Next, uh, uh, sub 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 turn. Uh, we will show you the uh, the OCT findings of the OCT pullback from the LED to the lamin. Palin. So uh, we are waiting for Palin to. to uh, present the, uh, the OCT recording. Ah, this is the OCT recording. Uh, hello, it's me again. Itu jangan uh, videonya. Yeah, okay. um, please allow me to share with you that this is Itu slide the dihilangkan. previous slide which dihilang. was uh, centered by Prof. Dago Santoso three weeks ago. And we can see from here, it's actually healing. The healing process is taking place, but it's not fully uh, covered yet. And as we move towards proximal, it's all very well implanted and it's, um, and it's a very healthy healing process now. This is a long bio mine. Long bio mine. And let me bring forward to you, this is well, actually... Well, the uh, everywhere. Yeah. Not Possibly. yet fully endothelialized because uh, the sand was implanted just three weeks ago. Yeah. Okay. And if you can see from here, the measurement from here is actually the area is 5.53 mm square. And the minimal luminal area, the disease that is the smallest area over here, is a 2.795. The third. Okay, this is the uh, LAD. And the left main measurement. You want me to show the third? Yeah, this is a. Sorry? Oh, you mean, sorry, hold on. I got what you mean. The opening of the search. Yeah. The LED, yes, the search, right? The area of the search. Hold on. The search is here. Yeah, the search is here. The search is here. Yeah. Can you show the ostium of the LED? Yes, go a bit yes. further, other side. Hostel yeah. lady. Can you measure here? Yep. So it looks also hostel LED. This is as you mentioned before. So ostium circle looks uh, fine. Ostium LED looks not good, and distal left yep. main doesn't look good as well. So in this situation, what do you prefer the strategy for left main? Provisional to LED? If I see these OCT pictures, I, I would have preferred IVUS because you understand better the, the way the, the plaque distributes than OCT. But if I see this picture, I would consider stenting uh, left main to the LED, balloon of the circ, and, and, and try to leave it like this. And then you have access for the further treatment of the distal circ. That would be my, my first strategy. If, if the circ has problems, I would consider culotte standing as a, as a backup. So you want to put the, the stand in the circ, uh, the, uh, from the lamp into the LED first, or uh, you want to do this uh, later on after we fix the circ? There, 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 there. Please rotate again, rotate again. You want to see the bifurcation side? Uh, rotate. Nah, see? Very beautiful. 
see that this dilemma is critically narrowed. This is two, uh, main, uh, MLA is 2.29, right? 2.79. And uh, if you follow the uh, rec recommendations of, uh, on uh, IVOS recommendations on uh, when to treat lamin, if the uh, ML MLA is uh, in the Western literature, uh, YASTI, for example, they use uh, uh, a six uh, square millimeter. But in Asia, of a path, for example, or in the study, we use uh, 4.8. So any figures below 4.8 is, is a good indicator that the left man is severely diseased and uh, cause, may cause uh, ischemia. So this left mean needs to be treated because uh, the uh, MLA is only 2.79. So we will fix the left mean, but of course uh, we don't want to fix this uh, before we uh, address the CERC, because otherwise we implant the stand there, uh, it would be rather difficult to uh, get good access to the CERC. Now the question is, how to assess and how to address the surf. Can you show the uh, IFOS of the surf, uh, OCT of the surf? So this OCT of the surf was done after proper pre -dilatation. Of course, uh, in the presence of uh, multiple, very critical, uh, close to 90, 95% stenosis in the surf, it is not that difficult to get good uh, image. But uh, anyway, this is uh, uh, the image that we can get. Uh, of course, uh, one that uh, is, is uh, very noticeable is the presence of dissection induced by balloon dilatations. But you you will see yourself uh, uh, the result of uh, uh, OCT exam of the CERT. Uh, can you make a run here from this called the proximal? Okay. Then. Uh, I would like you to uh, uh, help evaluate this uh, IFOS and then uh, help me in deciding what treatment would you suggest. So definitely you will move first, uh, you will try to fix the circumflex first, right? Correct. This OCT is, is post uh, pre dilatation, right? This is pre dilatation, okay. distally with a 2.25 millimeter balloon, because by our bowling, the diameter is 2.25, and uh, on fluoro, uh, it seems that this is the right uh, diameter. And then more proximally, we use 2.5 millimeter balloon. And this is the result. And with the pullback, you don't come back into the left main, right? So the end of the pullback is, is still in the circumflex. Of course, uh, we want to fix the left main and also the circ as well to get a complete vascularization. You want to see the NGO again? I will, I will show you the NGO. I think the crucial point here is, is, is what to do with the uh, one or two side branches. I, I, I didn't see the angio very good. It would be nice to have it uh, again, if it's possible. If I remember correctly, yes. there is a big uh, posterior lateral and two marginal yes, uh, branches. There, there are three uh, important side branches uh, of this marginal, and one is the biggest, and uh, all the side branches has a significant narrowing in the osteum. And one is, is more than the ostium. The first big uh, marginal branch is, is like uh, probably 10 to 15 millimeter long disease in the side branch, if I remember correctly. Yes. Eh? yes uh, the worst is the second one, which is the biggest. OK, uh, we will show you the film one more time after pre dilatation. The film, and the film. So uh, we have measured. Would it be possible to have the angiographic views again? Because now we're still yes. seeing the OCT. 
Just before we leave the, this OCT, uh, we would like to uh, let you know that uh, the distal reference vessel of the surf is very small. Well, how small, uh, Palin? How small? Two point. One point eight three. Is it? Is that media to media? Can you enlarge the? Can you enlarge the? Uh, So too small for scaffold. Even though maximal diameter is 2.5, we probably remember the result of uh, uh, absorb free uh, showing, uh, telling us that if we implant the stand in a very small vessel, 2.25 or less, then uh, PLR and uh, scaffold thrombosis is high. We want to show you the uh, NGO one more time. Film. Is this the last film? Yeah, I think this is the last film. Before this. One before. One before. Sebelum, sebelum. Uh, setelahnya ini. Setelahnya ini lagi. Okay, so I will make a, a film for you. Okay, can you see? Can you see the film? Yeah, basically, there are, there are three major branches, right? So you have uh, you wire the first big uh, marginal that has a severe stenosis at the ostium, but this stenosis goes a bit further down. So yeah. I think, uh, I mean, you have to do something about that stenosis. Further, the second bifurcation is a bit more difficult to see in this view, but there are also there are two big branches. So you don't want to lose any of these branches, I think. You want to keep all of these three branches open. And now you wire the, the second big branch. So you want us to pedalate the side branch also? Yeah, if you can make a bit more cranial view and try to uh, yeah, have a better view on the, on the second bifurcation, on the distal one. I will uh, make another few uh, uh, are Godo. There. So the second bifurcation looks uh, a bit better. So maybe you can just stand one of the two branches and hope that the other stays open and probably will stay open. But I think that the first bifurcation, you, you need to do something at the side branch. Maybe okay. just balloon, uh, but I, I will, I will, I will balloon the, the, the ostium of the will, bigger I will, branch. I will follow your suggestion. Uh, Even though uh, if we follow the EBC recommendations, it is uh, not recommended to <coughs> to do uh, side press dilatations before stenting because uh, from time to time we can have a dissection to the, in the ostium of the side press and this will uh, make us uh, more difficult to assess the side press. But uh, I will follow the, your suggestion. 
On the other hand, if you, if you don't one, do anything one, and you close it... One, because of one important reason, the angle of separation is narrow. If the angle of separation is narrow, then the chance of the side plants to get pinched after implantation of the uh, stand or scaffold and after post dilatation would be very high. So I will pre dilate with small balloon and I would not be too aggressive. I will use low pressure in order to avoid the section. If that agrees, if that is agreeable, and I, I will proceed. And then after this, I will fix the, the diesel surf. Before I, before I fix the left main. Any questions so far? I'm sorry for my, my voice. <coughs> I catch cold, and actually I have running nose, but uh, fortunately, because I'm so happy to be on air, <laughs> uh, my running nose stops at this time. Okay. This is a 2 balloon. And the back order. So we will use just nominal pressure to slightly open up the the osseum. We will not be too aggressive. Okay, there is still a way, so we go up. Slowly. This is an 11 atmosphere, and you will appreciate that there is still waste there. This is an indication that uh, that uh, particular spot is uh, resistant to dilatation, and uh, the section is. Uh, most likely inevitable. Okay, going up. Blast. Go blast. Okay, now there is no more waste. The hell is it? Is it? We just hope that uh, we'll get good results. It is definitely better than as compared to before. <coughs> Now we will uh, decide, uh, we, we have decided to put a drug eluting stand instead of a uh, scaffold to fix the distal lamen stenosis, considering that this, uh, this segment is narrow. And we remember the result of the uh, absorptory study, if the facial diameter is small, we will have higher TLR. So we will fix this with uh, 2.25 millimeter uh, bio mine. Then going up, we will use uh, your mirrors. Sampai dekat osiumnya itu, dekat osiumnya yang ke, enggak, enggak. Kalau sampai marginal juga di atasnya tuh, biasanya marginal juga. 
Just, just one question to inform also the audience. Are you working uh, radial and six French? Am I correct? No, no, this is a seven French guider. Yeah, seven French femoral. No, 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 radial. Radial, are, are but seven French. Yes, we very seldom use uh, femoral approach unless uh, we have a CWK, yeah, yeah. so. Okay. Are, you, are you using sheetless? No, or no, it's not conventional? Because this is seven French. Okay. This is something else. We have to just understand that yours is not available. So, in case we, did, we don't encounter any uh, problem in advancing our device through the circ, uh, through the circ ostium, through the distal lamin bifurcations, then we will go further with the mirrors, but, uh, and then fix the lamin uh, later on. But if we encounter difficulty in negotiating the angle, and the uh, publication, left main publication side, we will dilate that first. I'm so sorry, uh, we cannot use uh, by my <laughs> so sorry, because uh, it, uh, this size is not available. So we, we have to use uh, stand from our defender. This is synergy 2.5 by 24. So we go up, uh, up to nominal pressure, which is uh, 11. Now we go to 18. Twenty is above the uh, rated first pressure, 22. Okay, this way. Way above the rated first. Right. Okay, I think that will be the problem. I think that will be the problem. So I was fortunate that the side branch is not uh, closed, even though it is still narrow, but uh, it is not worse as compared to the situation before.
are trying to negotiate the first margin all but if we cannot then we will just implant the meter because the angle is uh, almost perpendicular okay now now is the time to implant the mirrors. We, we will choose the CO, correct, Palin? Correct, Palin? Where is Palin? <laughs> Palin disappears. <laughs> Sorry. 3094. We will choose uh, mirrors uh, uh, C by 18. For LED? The proximal is 3 by 18. Are you? Do you agree with the diameter? For LED? Uh, no, 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 no. LED, no. LCX? The proximal search. 3.90. Uh, the proximal search is measured by 3.20. 3. 3.2. 3.2. Okay, okay. Uh, from CO. OCT is a... 3 by 18. So, Dr. Santoso, what is your strategy now after synergy? Well, uh, as I said, uh, the distal segment is too small, so we so use uh, synergy, and then uh, we post-validate it in order to get a bigger lumen. Then, after this, uh, we will embark on implanting another, and this time, uh, scaffold, which is nearest, uh, 3 by 18, to fix the lesion in the, in the beginning of the mid-segment. So we'll just see whether I can easily negotiate this uh, scaffold through the uh, distal element analysis. But I'm very optimistic that we can. Three by eighteen for the proximal. What's going to be overlap? Alan, can you show me? Can you show me the distal? Uh, the self option is it business? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I the the siren sampai itu diameternya berapa I can see the set of here. Berapa? Berapa? Oh, please. Maaf, saya cuma mau tanya diameternya yang kita cover berapa. Most possible of the third that he took is not very disease. He didn't take all the way to left wing for the third. So it's not very disease. Here, he didn't take all the way to the left main. Left main is here. Left main is here, so he only okay, take the, the proximal of the third only. Or still third, you I see, uh, I put the scaffold here. I can't see the austere third. Uh, I will make a film yeah. here without contrast and then with a little bit of contrast. So you can uh, get some idea whether the placement of the of the scaffold is correct or not, or whether you have any other idea. Okay, any idea? Do I need to move further down or further up? Any suggestion? As far as we can see, it seems fine. I think it's good where you are. Okay, uh, you see that uh, uh, you probably you probably can see the uh, marker. There are three markers in the BVS. At this still to the dead markers, we have still 1.3 millimeter uh, scaffold. So uh, this scaffold, these markers, are already in overlapping with the proximal end of the of the synergy stand. I, I will make a floral here. Can you appreciate that? So.
So I would incline to pull it a little bit up in order to minimize the overlap zone. So I'll pull this up a little bit. Like Dr. Sotos, are you using sometimes stand boost or stand view, stand enhancement systems? We can use that. We can use that. Good suggestion. Sometimes, from time to time, you stand boost or stand face if you use a Philip. You want to see that? Okay, stand face. <coughs> uh, well, sometimes you, you use also Big Mac. Big Mac man, magnification. Okay, so long the Big Mac. Up, up. Big Mac, go bless. Before I go to stand boost, Big Mac below. Okay. This is big mag magnification. I think we can easily appreciate here that the, the markers, not the balloon markers, the, the three markers, the platinum markers, are practically in line, um, close to in line with the proximal end of the synergy. Okay, agree? So I don't think we need the stand boost. Stand boost. Okay, deploy here. Okay, chill. Okay, plan, 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 plan. Uh, ingat, uh, satu, satu atmosphere, 10 second. Timer. Uh, that's stand boost. You see, uh, we can move a little bit uh, up. Do you see the stand boost? Do you see the stand boost? No, we couldn't see it. It's probably so in the other it? panel of the angiography. Okay, uh, deploy, deploy. And then, okay. Okay, uh, Timer. <coughs> we very slowly increase the pressure. Inflation is uh, very, very slow. Dr. Santos, are you always uh, inflating by slow increment of increase in pressure? I am a, lo a loyalist to company's <laughs> recommendation. <laughs> well, uh, to be honest, uh, I've yeah, go on. to be honest, I've tried to uh, one or two times to increase that. Uh, uh, a little bit faster, and I, I get the uh, threat practice. So thank you, Maggie. So this is this can be a problem if we are dealing with life main situation, because uh, deployment time is a bit too long. Okay, the break. Any problem? 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 Yeah. Okay. How many atmospheres did you go? Uh, 13 atmosphere, we'll go to 14, 14 is 3 point, uh, 4, 14, okay, there, okay. you play. Okay, 
boleh cepat. Sampai yang empat belas tadi. We will see. This uh, the tip of this wire is already damaged, so. Okay, I hope the result is good. I think it is uh, quite acceptable if you agree. Do you think that I need to fix the circ more? Any uh, idea? What, what do you think about the proximal part of? I mean, I think we have uh, you have a uh, uh, not properly deployed uh, scaffold now. I think you need to post dilated. Before the scaffold, there is some haziness that is not uh, uh, clear. We will yeah. we will use uh, OCT to make sure what it is. And then you have also the distal to the synergy some uh, residual yes. stenosis at the second bifurcation, I think. Agree. OCT, yes. Medical OCT, then. Okay. I hope now I can have a better OCT image than before. Any contrast? Any contrast here? Then, then the other side. The bad line. The bad line. Alin, ready? Ready, ready? Okay. 
Where is the scaffold? Okay. Now, uh, Falin will explain the OCT finding. Can we start from the beginning, from the distal end of the stand? Okay, you see that, that uh, even in the, at the distal end uh, of the stand, before, before the stand, uh, the vessel is heavily diseased, and we just uh, some dissection see that this is a typical for a very, very small, small vessel disease. But uh, I don't think that we'll fix this. Okay, Falin, please explain. Okay, uh, from as you, you have, uh, Prof Santoso has just uh, explained that there is a dissection at the end of the stand, but it's actually not very significant as it's only two frames. That is uh, 0 0.4 mm. Could you hear uh, Falin? Yeah? My Hello? Hello? Can Could you hear Falin? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes we're hearing you. Okay, okay, I'm okay. so sorry. Uh, so the length of the dissection is actually only uh, 0.2 mm. It's uh, not significant. As you can see, there's a stand coming in, the, uh, the metallic stand, moving forwards, and there's a still a very heavy plug burden, as it's an electric plug. And this is, uh, let us measure this area, how big it is. It's a uh, mean diameter of a 2.2. Maybe pro as we move forwards towards proximally, you can see there's a little bit still a very strong plug burden over here that maybe uh, uh, pro can try to post dilate it later. And we are moving towards the uh, BRS can you at show the us Also, the uh, overlapping zone. Yeah, I'm showing you all the overlapping okay, zone. And stop there. Yeah. So well, these are the overlapping zone. So you see the sunray appearance and the scaffold. Both the sunray appearance represent the stand, sand struts and the scaffold, those, uh, the box-like structures. Yeah. Correct, Pralin? Yeah, the box-like. And uh, they can see the stand strut is actually not really uh, opposed to the other side because of the thickness of the uh, metallic stand. That's covering out, and we move towards proximal, and we can see another heavy burden of plug over here, and it's getting smaller. I can do a calculations of the MLA area over here. The first one is a 4.29 towards proximal. So the question is. Uh Uh, not well, of course. Um, uh, do we need to do some more work on it, or would you accept this result? And geographically, it looks uh, acceptable. Maybe this proximal segment should be post dilated with the larger balloon. Okay. How about the distal? So we decided to post uh, it, uh, the whole segment, the whole uh, standard or scaffolded uh, artery. We will be using 2.5 millimeter balloon for the distal part. Uh, we will be using a higher pressure balloon. Do you agree, Colin? Huh? Yes. <laughs> and then the we will use. <coughs> <coughs> sorry. <coughs> that's a very heavy so, and then uh, we will use 3.25 millimeter balloon uh, for the proximal end of the scaffold the scaffold at to us so I just want to underline here that uh, for 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 uh, for 
careful, the bottom line is that we have to be very, uh, we have to uh, look for perfection. I will present a few slides after we do this uh, post dilatations and repeat the IFU, uh, the, the uh, OCT, before we, I fix the left main. How many minutes do I still have time? Okay. I think there are ten, ten more minutes. Ten more minutes? Okay. Uh, while waiting for Dr. Linda to uh, introduce this, this uh, balloon, let me show you some slides, a few slides. Uh, can I have the slide, please, uh, Sugi? Sugi, slides, please. Uh, these are the issues. Slides, next. Next slide, please. Okay, so I, I will present some important uh, uh, issues that uh, we need to address uh, if we are doing, uh, if we are implanting BVS in complex cases. So as you see here, proper implantation uh, technique addresses mechanisms between eight and uh, late very uh, and very late stem thrombosis. If your device is uh, uh, used to treat a small vessel, uh, next, you see you will get a, a higher incidence of uh, early stem uh, scaffold thrombosis. Whereas uh, if you uh, have uh, malabsorption or inappropriate uh, uh, dilatation and residual uh, narrowing, you may have a very late uh, stem thrombosis. So in this particular case, for example, I don't uh, incline, I'm, I'm not inclining to use a uh, uh, scaffold to treat the distal surf. Next. So that's, that's the next, that's the next. Now, for treatment, or diffuse lesion, next, uh, somebody, somebody. marker to marker overlap or no overlap for small vessel. If the, the distal segment is too small, don't implant PVS. Uh, you can implant DES or use a droculating balloon, next. I first saw OCT is uh, advisable, next. How about the applications? Uh, pot, uh, the bigger uh, balloon, very important. If side branch is not, not compromised and procedure is finished, this is uh, EBC consensus. I have my own uh, strategy, next. It is uh, last year. If the side branch is compromised, dilate with a, an adequately sized balloon and then finish with final thought. Uh, the professional uh, approach uh, still remains the default technique as uh, I have shown in the uh, first and second cases. Routine, routine kissing, final kissing balloon is not recommended, not recommended, only if necessary. If the second sign is needed, then we use a tap or T and not pull out or mini pull out or, uh, or, or crush. Next. And this is uh, my own strategy. Next. If the vessel, uh, the side branch is smallest, the strategy is keep it open strategy. 
You, you implant the, uh, the VRS across the side press and you're done. Next. If the side press is sizable, more than 2.5, and disease extent is less than 5 from the osteum, and if there is no significant pinching of the side press, remove the guide wire and you're done. Next to the rubber. Okay. If there is significant pinching, then sequential balloon dilatation. It is perfectly safe to use a pen atmosphere to dilate the side press balloon, and then finish the case with a pop. Only if necessary, if necessary, not always, mini kissing balloon dilatation at low pressure. Next. And if the side is still flattened, we can uh, apply it either tap, PVS and PVS, or PVS and PVS. Next. Plan to strength strategy, T, tap or stamping. If the disease extent is more than five millimeters from the osteum, there is large area of distribution. Do not do or do it properly in preparation in the presence of heavy calcifications or excessive aggression. Again, I would like to stress here, we have no evidence, this medicine, that this strategy is proven. Okay? But this is what we are doing in our hospital. And so far, the is study, which is, uh, which is of no scientific value at all, uh, tells us that this strategy works. Next. Now, how about the PRS thrombosis? We are all afraid of PRS thrombosis, and quite often we, we blame the thick stretch of the PRS. We know that BVS has a stretch of 150 micron, and MIRES has a stretch a thickness of only 100 micron. Next. But there are also patient-related factors like diabetes, renal failure, low ejection fraction, and so on. Next. And these, uh, situations like this, where, uh, which uh, we have now in the first and second case, like for example, diffuse disease, small vessels, bifurcation, CTO, and so on. Next. But, next, next, there are two, next, there are two factors which are controllable, and this has to be uh, very seriously uh, uh, assessed. Uh, for example, angioplasty related uh, factors, malposition, under expansion, fractures, and so on. We can assess this uh, with using imaging device. And this is very, very important, especially if you are uh, treating uh, complex cases. Platelet related factors. For example, in this case example, tomorrow we will check the verify now to assess whether the patient is uh, resistant to aspirin. In a very, very complex cases, uh, we normally use uh, uh, potent, more potent uh, dual antiplatelet medications. Next, and this is the last slide. Next. Yes, this is TAP. You see, uh, we, we incline to use TAP uh, in complex cases, uh, very potent factor. Next, next, next. This is the last slide, I think. Next. Okay, uh, thank you. And uh, I will uh, continue with the case. Uh, huh? 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 Okay. Okay, then. Now we will check the IFUS uh, OCT again. This is after post gel, and we haven't uh, yet uh, treated the left main LED. We need to treat the left main LED, of course. I'm afraid I don't have enough time for that. Sorry, the wire is pulled out. The wire is already damaged.
ओके तो ये आए क्या निकलो सब पहले अब देखने Okay, ready? I think it's better now. Anything? Okay, Palin will explain. Can, can you rotate the the pestle? Long it, long it. Okay, okay, like that. Let me do the completion. Uh, uh, excuse me. Don't you see the OCT? Uh, there is no sound. Stop, 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 stop. Could you could you see us or hear us? Yes, yes, we are seeing seeing OCT and hearing you. So it seems that this okay. part looks much better now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks better. This is a standard area. There is still a little bit of dissection here and there, but overall the struts are well opposed. Here the scaffold is uh, in some area a little bit mal opposed, but not much. Less than 200 microns by eyeballing. This is perfect result. No, no uh, proximal dissection. See? Uh, the proximal part is uh, acceptable, yes. Yes, a little bit of malapose, but uh, not much, and uh, less than 200 micron by 250 microns by uh, uh, eyeballing. And there is no dissection, even though uh, we still, there's still uh, remaining uh, eccentricity, eccentricity, but uh, I would accept this result. And you will appreciate also in, that in some parts, the after post dilatations, the struts are embedded, more embedded to the pestle wall. Not all, but uh, some of the struts are embedded, and this is a, a good sign. So I will accept this result in the third. What do you think? Uh, if you agree with me, then I'll proceed with the left main. Yeah, I think it's a reasonable strategy. Okay, I appreciate that. I thank you so much for your uh, comment, and I will move to the lab main. Now, the question about the lab main is, should we fix this with uh, DES or with uh, mirrors, with, uh, <laughs> with scaffolds? What do you think? So I will do a final shot for the... You see, the result in Cirque is uh, very much acceptable to me. Any suggestion? So, Dr. Satoso, we have uh, six to seven minutes extra time for you. <laughs> okay. So, uh, I will fix this with D, yes. Uh, First of all, because uh, in order to deploy uh, uh, um, uh, scaffold, 
deployment time is a bit too long. And it, uh, particularly if the patient is, uh, has a poor left ventricular function, it can be uh, rather risky. Of course, uh, we can do that. And because uh, in this particular case, uh, the disease process doesn't extend too much to the uh, left main ostium. So we can just use uh, uh, short, uh, short meters, for example, uh, 3.5, and then uh, upsize this to 40. But the problem is, again, deployment time. Deployment time is a bit too long, but uh, uh, maybe if the left ventricle function is good, we can, we can still try. But uh, I will need uh, pre dilatation first. Uh, I will need the CO balloon. We have cutting balloon. Uh, I will, I'm looking for cutting balloon now, 3O. So I will not fix the CERC ostium. Uh, the strategy is just a professional sending strategy. Uh, crossing over the uh, circ with either DES or uh, MIRES. Are you planning to start from the stent into the LAD, or uh, you want to leave a gap uh, between the, 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 the stent you are implanting and the old stent in the LAD? Uh, from the left main There is an old stand in the LED eh, that you put like uh, two weeks yes. ago or something like yes. that. Yes. 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 Yes, uh, we need to fix the proximal LED. So from from the stand, we will implant the stand from the yeah, overlapping in, in overlapping the with the previously implanted stand all the way up to the mid LED, uh, mid left main, not not to the Austin. Yeah, yeah. What is the diameter in the left main? The, the slightly healthy part of the left main. Almost four. Media to media. And luminal area. So I will use a certain system. Look at my friend. Hello. I'm going to stand here, but I'll ask you guys. Of course, uh, I can use uh, MIRES uh, 3.5 or 4.0, uh, 
And then uh, if you use the 3.5, uh, I can upsize that to 4.0. Uh, but for the sake of time, I will use the ES. Uh, if uh, the technique, if uh, we use uh, mirrors, if uh, of course uh, the recommended uh, the recommendations from the company is that to do uh, balloon uh, to do inflation very slowly, but in case the patient cannot tolerate, we stop inflate the balloon and then go up again. That's the technique. Go up again and then uh, lower the uh, to uh, the same pressure and then go higher up. If the patient cannot tolerate, deflate again. But again, uh, one thing is uh, very important is that if you're using a big uh, stand or big balloon, then the deflation time is uh, longer. So uh, we have to take care of this, put this into our serious uh, consideration. Yeah. Hampir selesai, tinggal satu pak. So which size is now this one? This is 3.5, and I will upsize this to around 4, or even uh, bigger than 4. This is DES, not uh, mirrors, because as I said, of course you can still use... Uh, okay, this is good. We can use uh, mirrors, but uh, again, uh, the issue is uh, inflation time, which is uh, rather long for left main. And this can be an issue, an issue uh, the left ventricle function is poor. But uh, we can try. And if the patient cannot tolerate, uh, we can deflate it. But uh, I don't have too much time now. Uh, you're saying that uh, I have only a few minutes uh, left. So I will deflate, uh, inflate this. OK. And then. OK. Just deflate the pressure. Recommended for all blue. For all blue. For all. For all. This is by mime. And geographically, the listen is uh, acceptable, but I want to post a little bit uh, with the four balloon. Then uh, we will use our OCT. Agree, fine. Very fine. Disappear again.
Planning to open the struts uh, in direction of the circumflex or, or not? This is a uh, crossing over the cir circumflex. So, uh, circ osteum is jailed, but as long as the circ is not uh, compromised, I think it, uh, it is uh, acceptable. Even though the circ is compromised, if you use FFR, quite often, uh, quite often the FFR is still uh, normal. The situation is uh, slightly different if we have uh, disease, uh, extensive disease in the circ. If we have extensive disease in the circ and the circ osteum is uh, pinched, then uh, usually the FFR is abnormal. So when the circumflex is not pinched, you're not routinely oh. recrossing, right? Yes, it is not pinched, so I don't need to dilate the surf option. I'll make a film here. Slightly pinched. Sasko, would you, would you post dilate the surf yourself? Uh, in this case, I don't even if it's uh, angiographically good. In, in this case, I would consider since distally there are several stents. If it is a but disease, pardon? then I would. You will consider what? But pardon? Would you okay. balloon the circle or, or? Yeah, so I think because you routine. need, yeah. So in this case, especially because there is so many disease distally, we need to. I will also. We will assess this in the uh, spider view. We will get a better idea in the spider view. Uh, with OCT, we can have uh, some idea about the cell costume, but it is not very accurate. Okay, Farin. Farin, are you ready? And it was up higher. And it was up. Ready? That's too long. Too strong. Okay, ready? Ready? Palin will show you the result. Can you show us the CERC? The CERC publication. Rotate, rotate the cursor, yes. CERC, go further, further, further. Should be here. Yeah, yeah, over there. Yeah, this is a certain Okay, circ, circ is not pinched, right? Not pinched. Not pinched at all. Not see? pinched at all. It's very it's huge. Big. It's very huge. No okay, pinch, uh, can no you see the OCT? Can you see the OCT? Yes. Palin yes. will yes. explain this yes. to you. Okay, so Palin, please. Okay, prop has centered 3018 as from distal we move towards proximal. All is very well opposed, and this is the. Uh, this is the overlapping site. As you can see, all is very nicely in um, post well. And now we are moving towards the third.
and there is no plug so sheet and there the is awesome. yeah See? it's very huge and also very minimal of a stand struck being covered over here and no black and, no, and, and, and there is no plug sheet no plug sheet there's no plug sheet yes. and now you're moving towards the left main all is very well opposed so i think i would accept this result any suggestion left main looks perfectly fine yes to me yes any other suggestion or can we say that we are done now yes sir dr santoso thank you very much we are coming to the end of this session thank you for your two cases and thank you also for inviting us uh, and giving us uh, the honor to take part in this uh, BRS symposium. I hope uh, our discussion will be of uh, uh, any benefit to all of you, and uh, I do believe that I, I also learned a lot from you all. I thank, thank you so much, thank and have a, have a nice day in India. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. We are moving to the peripheral session, and I'm inviting the next moderator, Dr. Kamerkan, and expert panel from uh, India, Dr. Karnik, Vinod Shah, and Dr. Mashed Shah. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I think uh, without wasting any more seconds, uh, we'll st start with the peripheral sessions. And uh, may I request uh, Dr. Nikhil Karnik uh, from Mumbai, India, to give his presentation on uh, clinical plasticity of PLLA exploring the role of BRS in peripheral indications. Nikhil. Thank you, Dr. Kamerkar. Uh, clinical plasticity of PLLA, exploring the role of BRS in peripheral indications. Uh, I have no potential conflict of interest. Uh, now, the in, uh, as we all means, uh, peripheral vascular disease has a va varied uh, indications, and uh, we all know that uh, the available uh, metallic stents that we have with us are, are of different uh, designs and uh, different uh, uh, cell designs. They may be open cell, closed cell, covered stents. Uh, we all, we have, we all ha have enough clinical data to prove that uh, the uh, long-term patency rates of metallic stenting are much better than uh, plain balloon dilatation. Uh, but the metallic stents available with us are associated with their own sort of problems, uh, which, uh, which may be stent fractures, aneurysm formation, or instant restenosis. Uh, the metallic stents have given relatively good results in the ILAC segment when we talk about peripheral vascular disease. But however, when it comes to femoropopletal segment and as well as the infrapopletal segment, the long-term patency rates of metallic stents have not shown uh, enough promise. Uh, unfortunately, most of the patients who present with critical limb ischemia or who require peripheral in intervention as a limb salvage procedure uh, have got multi-level involvement, which also includes the, uh, the femoropopletal segment and more so the infrapopletal segment. Uh, so basically, what is the intuitive desire in stenting? We basically, 
across all the entire clinical spectrum, whether it is coronary artery disease or carotid artery disease, renal or peripheral arterial disease. Basically, uh, what we want is uncaging of the vessel wall. So this is a basic uh, OCT image of a B, uh, BRS uh, implanted showing that there is nothing left behind in the vessel wall in the end. So basically we have the advantages of the metallic stenting without the metal eventually being there. Uh, so these are the, uh, these are the uh, promise of the BRS, uncaging of the vessel wall and, and restoration of vascular function. Uh, avoid positive remodeling and treated ma malopposition of the stent, causing instant restenosis. Uh, resolve or avoid late strut, strut fractures. Facilitation of repeat treatment since there is no metal, uh, whether surgical or repeat angioplasty is possible. Uh, restoration of the normal vessel curvature. Uh, in, in instant restenosis, there is no question of adding more metal and uh, early dis discontinuation of double an uh, dual antiplatelet agents. Uh, Follow-up can be done with MR and CT imaging and not all patients require invasive angiography. Uh, and overall, the cost on the system is uh, significantly reduced. This is an interesting slide which shows how the degradation of the PLLA uh, does not actually affect uh, the radial strength or the support that the device provides on the vessel wall. So the PLLA uh, is linked with uh, is linked with amorphous tie chains between the uh, between the PLLA members, and these with hydrolysis, these side chains are first cleaved. So, uh, as you can see in the graph lower down, that the support or the radial strength of the device is uh, only starts reducing between six, eight to eight months to one year after the device has been deployed. So uh, it gives equal amount of radial strength and support to the vessel wall for about six to eight months uh, as compared to a metallic stent. And when enough, when the number of chains connecting the PLLA uh, members is uh, broken, that's when the main uh, device starts degrading. So this uh, plasticity of PLLA can be extended to variety of clinical applications like uh, coronary artery disease, uh, larger diameter stents for left vein as well as other peripheral indications, renal, carotid, SFA, infrapopliteal, as well as intracranial uh, atherosclerosis treatment. Uh, coming to the variety of stents available, we come to credence below knee, which is a serolimus eluting bioabsorbable peripheral scaffold system. Uh, it's basically got a hybrid design uh, combined with closed cell as well as open cell. Uh, the scaffold backbone is basically PLLA with a thickness of 100 microns and the open cell device gives enough uh, optimal side branch, uh, bra branch access which are not compromised. It has a very low profile, about 1.2 millimeter of the, del uh, del of the delivers, uh, de delivery system. Uh, it is a very flexible stent, it provides high vessel conformability and uh, the estimated degradation of the stent is about two to three years. The drug coat is serolimus 1.25 micrograms per millimeter square uh, on the PDLLA. Uh, the sizes available are from diameters ranging from 2.5 mm to 4.5 mm and lengths varying from 8 mm to 44 centimeters, 40 millimeters. This is uh, basically designed for the infrapopliteal segment. Uh, which currently uh, none of the metallic stents, including drug eluting stents, have shown uh, long-term <coughs> patency lids. Uh, so right now, the only thing being used is uh, either uh, PTA balloon dilatation or drug eluting balloons. Coming to Credence BRS, which is a serolimus uh, uh, eluting bioresorbable peripheral ca scaffold system. This is also a balloon-mounted stent. 
uh, it is mainly used uh, for larger arteries coming in larger diameters pro uh, from 5 millimeters to 10 millimeters in diameter and lens from 17 to 57 millimeters mainly for the iliacs and subclavians. Uh, the balloon mounted uh, bare metal stent also available in the same diameters for ILEC and subclavians, 5 millimeters to 10 millimeters and lens from 17 millimeters to 57 millimeters. This is a cobalt chromium over the wire sense system, 035 wire compatible, uh, 6 French uh, sheath compatible. The Melange BRS, which is a serolimus eluting bioresorbable renal scaffold system. Uh, this is uh, this is 014 wire compatible, uh, and the diameters available are 5 millimeters to 7 millimeters, and lens 12 millimeters to 19 millimeters. Low down, you can see the OCT images uh, of immediately on the left hand side is the immediate uh, stent deployment, and about 30 day follow up, which shows complete intermalization of the scaffold. Uh, the balloon expandable uh, bare metal stent for the renal and the biliary system, again sizes from 5 to 7 mm, and cobalt chromium 014 wire compatible. Uh, this is a ProMesa or the braided peripheral bioresorbable scaffold. Uh, this basically is a very, uh, it's a very uh, supple and uh, it, uh, it's, it has got good indications for use in the SFA and the, uh, in the carotid artery. Basically, the SFA stents have not shown long-term patency rates with any of the devices available so far because there are a wide range of motion in the SFA in the thigh, including flexion, extension, rotation, as well as abduction and adduction. So these all these movements, along with two joints uh, above and below the stent, cause puts the stent through a lot of, uh, lot of stress, which eventually leads to strain fractures and occlusions. So this, uh, this uh, uh, has got a very potential uh, uh, good use for the SFA especially. Uh, diameters available are right from 3 millimeters to 10 millimeters, lengths from uh, 20 millimeters to 200 millimeters. Uh, the drug coating is uh, 3 micrograms per millimeter square in this stent and it has a very low profile in navigation, ideal for the treatment of carotids, SFA, popliteals, iliac and below knee lesions. This just shows you how flexible the stent is and it can be folded or even rotated or twisted in any direction without compromising the vessel patency. Uh, these are peripheral uh, balloon, uh, uh, PTA balloons, uh, mosaic PTA. This is an over-the-wire system, 035 wire compatible, 5 French to 8 French compatible, and uh, 5 millimeter distal uh, tip without much overhang of the balloon. Uh, very low crossing profile. So in conclusion, uh, the current generation of metal stents for the treatment of peripheral vascular disease have their definite disadvantages with uh, re-stenosis, strut fractures and aneurysms, etc. are commonly associated with these metal, metal stents. The concept of bioresorbable uh, vascular holes with a promise of leaving nothing behind in the vessel wall is clinically compelling. First generation of indigenously developed peripheral BRS technologies have now entered human clinical trials. Uh, that is the infrapopliteal as well as the uh, SFA stents, uh, our BRS uh, have entered human clinical trials and soon the renal stents will also be entering into human clinical trials. Soon clinical usefulness of these promising developments will be available for clinicians to adopt them in routine practice. Thank you. Maybe we could take a couple of questions. Are we ready to go on live?
Good evening, Dr. Vimal. We are live here and, uh, uh, handing over session yeah. to Dr. Kamerkar. Thank you. Good evening, Vimal. Oh, great. Hi. How are you, boss? I am good. Thank you. And how are you? I can't recognize person behind the mask. Yes, I am the one on the <laughs> with the mask on. Yes. Okay. You uh, can you okay. uh, describe your uh, patient, please? Yes, uh, uh, we have a elderly lady, 74 year old, and uh, she is uh, uh, early CKD with a creatinine of 2.26, and uh, she has a peripheral vascular disease and a very short distance claudication with occasional rest pain. This is more so on the right leg. And she gets a, a cramp-like pain while walking in the, left, uh, in the right calf. Now we had planned, uh, we did a Doppler for her. And the, there was an SFA disease with tibial vessel disease. We got a, a plain MRI done. At our institution, we have a three Tesla machine. And we got a, more or less a good answer on the plain uh, peripheral angio. We, we realized there were at least two or three segments where there were tight stenosis in the SFA. And there was a, a disease of the tibioperoneal trunk. The posterior tibial and the peroneal artery were occluded in the mid calf region. <laughs> the anterior tibial, I could see it and feel it all the way into the foot. We have taken her up with the idea of doing an angioplasty for the SFA and we thought if we need to open up the uh, tibioperoneal trunk, we were planning to do a, 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 a credence BRS scaffold for the uh, tibioperoneal trunk. However, the being the, the, the posterior tibial and the peroneal being occluded, uh, in the mid leg region, we decided not to go ahead with the tibioperoneal trunk angioplasty. I think in a patient like this, dilating the SFA should be good enough. So in this patient, uh, what we've planned is, uh, uh, avoid a stent, and if we can do without a stent, so we are planning to do a, a drug-coated balloon. So what we have done in this patient now, I will try and show you the carbon dioxide angiography in this patient. Can we go through all the images? What were her ankle brachial indices, Vimal? Uh, actually, I don't have it at present here. We got it done yesterday, but uh, uh, the the uh, what I got a message that it was abnormal. The exact amount or number I don't have it here with me just now. Now you can see this carbon dioxide angiography. We have a specialized uh, syringe carbon dioxide angio set which you get it from OptiMed. So in these patients with CRF, we do not use contrast, we use the carbon dioxide. So on this angio, as you can see that the catheter has been brought in from the left femoral puncture. Here is the bifurcation of the iota and you can see both the iliac arteries are normal. Next, next, next one. 
this is did you connect the there you can see the uh, uh, yes this is a carbon dioxide angiogram okay i suppose you can see the syringe and the connections that are there yes and there is a carbon dioxide cylinder in the lab so here you can see the common femoral artery bifurcating into the profunda and sfa many times vimal uh, this so far it looks good yes many times this carbon dioxide yes. angiography is quite painful so is she under sedation or yes. what no fortunately for us uh, we uh, she is quite cooperative she does complain of some pain but it's not very bad for her okay so she has tolerated it so far and we intend to complete the whole procedure on a carbon dioxide now you can any see the angiogram here in the mid sfa sorry yes any particular reason why you went crossover than uh, uh, downstream uh, femoral on the same side uh, uh, my we usually prefer to come from the opposite side as far as possible because uh, once i have done the plasty i don't want to give a compression on the same side number 2 is she is little bulky not very bulky but yeah she is bulky <coughs> and doing an anti grade puncture in these kind of patients can be complicated once in a while but when you have a tbl disease as well to address probably you know anti grade no that is what uh, as i show you the angio okay you will realize i am not planning to do the tbl in this patient okay so here is the uh, you can see the sfa lesion here a uh, tight at one spot and the segment of about 6 to 7 cm is diseased next can we have the next shoot going down across the hunters canal the artery is not very bad it's quite okay so my idea is to dilate the 7 cm segment can we go down now if you see the popliteal artery it's quite good with a with good anterior tibial running down and there is a tibio peroneal artery disease so this was the segment i was planning to dilate going down further you can see that the pta and the peroneal artery are narrow next now if you see that it is getting occluded in the mid and distal leg the anterior tibial is going all the way into the foot so with this kind of a picture i thought there is it's not worth putting a a bioresorbable stent in the tibia peroneal trunk because with not much of good distal run off the stent might get just occluded thrombosed we then demonstrated that the ata is going down very well to the foot so with this background we then decided uh, we you can see the opposite sfa also is narrowed vimal is there a lesion behind the knee i will just show you the cross over yeah is there a lesion behind the knee no there is not much of a lesion there no you can see it again no not this one the other one this was the left side that i was showing let's see the right one previous one yeah so this looks good over there the one previous to this now i'll just show you one previous to this one previous 
This was the lower one. No, no, in the this. leg. No, in the SFA, distal SFA. SFA, yeah. Go, go back. There. Yeah. There is about 50% narrowing there. But I don't think so. I want to touch that and get a long length of uh, uh, balloon there and create a more dissection and all. The uh, drug coated balloon that I have, the longest I have is a 80, 80 millimeter. So I'm going to use a ranger from Boston Scientific. I will first try and show you the crossover technique if some friends are sitting there who don't know about crossover. Hey, the mic has come off. You can just pull my mask down, it's coming in my way. So, uh, can we see the, the crossover? I'll try and show you the crossover now from the left side that the puncture was made. So what we do is uh, we take a 5 French uh, RDC catheter over a 3 5 terumo wire. And normally under roadmap we go and get the catheter into the opposite iliac. Since we don't want to inject too much contrast here, this was more or less a, 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 a blind procedure done by my colleague, Dr. Gordon, who is there with me just now, to my right. So as you can see that we are trying to search the bifurcation. Normally this is just a, a 30 second procedure if there is a road map. The wire was not going, so we were somewhere else, so we just... Now you see that we pushed it little up, made a good curve, and now got it into the opposite side. Then we got a terumo wire and got a catheter there. And we exchanged it for a stiff, amplard, super stiff wire. There you can see a 7 French crossover sheath. We get it from Cook, this particular sheath. It's an excellent sheath. So once we were across, the next thing that we did was uh, getting a catheter into the SFA. And this is again a road map with a carbon dioxide injection. Now, as you can see that we are using a wire to cross the lesion under road map. We have used a uh, V14 wire to cross this lesion because the Drug coated balloon is uh, 014018 compatible. So you've got the wire coming. So here you will now have the uh, wire coming in. I think this is a stenotic segment, so not much of a problem getting a wire across. As, as we start doing a CTO, then the challenge comes up to cross that lesion. So once the 014 wire was across, we will now get a, a 4 mm into 80 mm balloon to pre-dilate the... In a, a, if you are using a drug coated balloon, it is always important to pre-dilate 
and we do this under road map as you can see that this is 4 by 80 balloon and not the balloon that we have used here is a mosaic balloon it is uh, the balloon uh, made by Merrill and uh, it's a superb balloon that I've been using regularly for these kind of cases So now we will go ahead and uh, balloon dilate this. I don't like this. Here. Okay, so we will do the pre dilatation now. This is a standard technique, nothing new. This is a balloon, so we can use a dilute contrast here. Okay. Okay. So this balloon has a seven atmosphere is a nominal pressure. I think we didn't really get a, a real waste here. Looks like a very soft plaque which is uh, causing this tight stenosis there. So uh, this was seven atmosphere that we've gone up to, actually eight, nine atmosphere. So we'll get this off now. Okay, deflate it. Since this is a pre-dilatation, there is no need to keep it for too long. You see that there is a rapid deflation of the balloon, which is a very good thing, a good quality uh, of the balloon. We'll get the balloon out now, and, uh, and then we'll go ahead with our uh, uh, drug-coated balloon. The present uh, scenario, as far as SFA is concerned, is to um, uh, avoid metal as far as possible. And therefore, uh, all the attempts are being made to have um, uh, drug-coated balloons and keep the metal only if there is a recoil or a dissection. Okay. Now, after this is over, we would like to do a, a run with a carbon dioxide. Okay. Now, uh, it, you have to remember that your DSA machine, uh, which has a CO2 pro software program on this. Okay. So, ready? So, we will now show you the DSA post plasty. Now the patient complained of pain, which means that definitely the, uh, the amount of carbon dioxide which has gone down into the tibials must have been little more than what was before the plasty was done. Okay. So the next thing we that we, we plan to do now is to... G. Yeah. You know, my experience, uh, especially for doing CO2 for TBLs, uh, more of complexities and CTOs, yes. really be pain be really becomes unbearable. And at times, uh, you know, they really need a very high sedation. And especially these uh, yes. chronic uh, kidney patients, uh, it's a bit of a challenge for even anesthetists yes. to keep them quiet. Yes, exactly. You know, normally for the TBLs, I don't like to do a carbon dioxide. If you are doing a multiple injections, and as the number of injections increase, then we have more and more problem with these patients. So uh, the present, uh, now we are uh, taking the drug-coated balloon. As you can see that this is a Ranger. Uh, 5 mm by uh, 80 mm. 
And uh, this is uh, a, a good balloon that we have. And as I said, this is com oh, again, my this thing has fallen off. Vimal. Just a minute, my mic has fallen off. No, wait, okay. It's an it's cool. It's upper slip karna padega. Can you hear me? One minute, oh, it's not balancing. One minute, one minute is my mic has fallen off. Just see the dika one po. Okay. Yeah, tell me, uh, yeah, since, Danesh. Since it's a drug coated balloon, it would be worthwhile showing the notice yes. technique to introduce this balloon without any uh, drug loss. Perfect. So now uh, this catheter, the, the balloon was as usual covered with a plastic sheet as you can see that over there. And there is a peel away sheet right behind it. So what you I have to do is to, they need to mag push it the... Animal. Okay, you need to magnify this. So this was the plastic sheet covering the uh, drug coated balloon. And there is a sheet right behind, as you can see the other piece here. This is one and this is two. Can you mag more? Can you magnify more? Yeah, better. Can you see it? I'll keep it under the blue yes. cover, blue yes. background. Yes, it's better now. So you can see that I'm pushing the peel away sheath from behind and getting this out. This, the first covering sheath is out and there is the second sheath which is now covering it. And I will not be touching the balloon. The idea is that uh, uh, the minute you touch the uh, uh, balloon, the uh, drug can get uh, uh, displaced and you will have less drug going at the tissue site. Now if you see that, I am not touching the balloon at all. And it's uh, the covering sheet is there protecting the balloon. I will get it all the way up to the level of the sheet. The another site where you can lose the drug is at the valve of the sheet. So you need to cover the balloon completely and insert the point it here. Okay, now I have got the uh, my the sheet which was covering the balloon. I'm holding it. Yes, and I'm now getting my balloon over the wire. As I told you, uh, I have protected the balloon. Uh, 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 being um, uh, you know manhandled by my hand as well as the valve which is there on the sheath. Now you can see that the balloon is coming over the wire at the site of the narrowing. I think this segment should be okay, I think. So we will be inflating the balloon here. We can go ahead. Sister, roll the, this. One minute, just fluoro. Yeah, so the balloon is in good position now. We will inflate it. The drug coated balloon should be kept inflated. Yeah, we can inflate it now. I keep it normally for about four minutes. 
allowing the drug to get resorbed or absorbed by the, uh, uh, the wall of the blood vessel. We all know that this is a non-proliferative drug and uh, the chances of re-stenosis are less. Even if there is some amount of dissection which is not flow limiting, I'm not going to put a stent. Yes. We have inflated this uh, uh, balloon up to eight atmospheres. That's it. We will be waiting for about uh, four minutes uh, for the drug to get absorbed by the wall of Do the blood vessel. Does any audience have any questions for Vimal? Uh, Danesh, how often are you doing drug-coated balloons? Uh, I, I would say 70-30, uh, 70, 30. 70 DCBs, 30 maybe 70. stains. Oh, okay. So that's a good, and uh, in, the, in the SFA territory. SFA, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, ours is also the same, though we would like to do more of uh, tibial vessels with drug-coated. Somehow, uh, the results uh, of DCBs in below knee, especially TBLs. Yes. Uh, yes. You know, I'm not yes. very happy. How about you? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Basically, uh, the, the balloons that are designed uh, for the TBL vessels are not really ideal for the TBL vessels. I so, uh, the that's, impact that's trial which was uh, there. That actually took off the steam as far as a duck coated balloon in below knee was concerned. The issue of, sorry? As far as the uh, BRS. Vimal, one, sorry? Vimal, there's a question from audience. Sure, sure. The phase of the balloon I'm asking is the uh, RT2 uh, balloon ratio yes. 1 is to 1 or uh, you go little higher size balloon? 1 is to 1. No, uh, this is one is to one, one is to one. And you always pre dilate with the other See the, the, yes. So uh, in a drug coated balloon, you have to prepare the bed very well. So you pre dilate it, uh, uh, I usually pre dilate one millimeter less. Okay. And then go ahead with my, uh, the, the size that I wanted. And keep it how long, sir? It will be one minute or two minutes. You'll keep it, or I kept it. I normally keep it for three to four minutes. Okay. We have kept the patient nicely heparinized, so uh, that's advantage. I was talking about the BRS in the tibial vessels, and uh, uh, we've now done three cases uh, of. Uh, two of tibioperoneal trunk and one of the posterior tibial. And we've completed at least a uh, uh, three month follow up with two patients. And in all the, uh, 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 both the patients, the three month follow up looks very good. So with the follow-up, we do the ABI index, we do the ultrasound Doppler, and we plan to do the angio after six months. I think the BRS results so, below uh, knee are quite encouraging. It's been good experience. Yes. So there you can see that we have deflated the balloon now. And uh, we'll get it out and now make a demonstration of what is the flow. I think we can demonstrate it now only with this. Would we you be happy with CO2 carbon dioxide check shoot? Uh, I, we'll see that or, if, if or necessary, one shoot or two shoots with contrast. Or just a couple of cc of uh, non-ionic contrast, just diluted. 
yeah yeah we may do that just let us see what is the result there it is now you saw that the patient moved but the results are very good yes now she is complaining of pain so once she heard kamerka talking about pain she is uh, complaining now is there a residual lesion towards the so, lower end yes there is a small little residue we can redilate it there is no problem with that but uh, i think uh, with a the drug there i am not worried i think the long term outcome i can just take it once again and inflate that road map so i'm going to go ahead and do the dilatation again <coughs> that was the segment right yes sir yeah okay <coughs> so we'll redilate it maybe give a little higher pressure whenever there is a re stenosis or a, a, we normally go with a little higher pressure there go up to 12 or something that's it so now we have gone up to 12 atmosphere and at 12 the uh, we are getting 5.38 so we'll keep it for about a minute here kidar hai so uh, uh sfa i think these lesions are proving very good with a drug coated balloon vimal just a question yes so you know like this residual lesion when would you dilate again with a higher pressure vis-a-vis -vis against with the risk of dissection with a higher pressure great uh see if uh, there is more than 30% residual stenosis then i would think of redilating it because we don't do pressure gradients or anything so much so we have to go what do you see agree so that is how now uh, definitely when you dilate with a higher pressure there is definitely a risk of dissection so i won't be surprised if there is a dissection now so i have i have dilated for i mean kept it dilated for nearly uh, 1 minute 30 seconds so i'm going to come back and see same same balloon it's the same balloon that same i have balloon. used so again i'll do just a quick run with a yes maybe we can use contrast here the pain is quite a bit here this I, contrast I would say if, if you want to use the same balloon maybe the similar pressure uh, or if you want higher then you could use ha uh, huh. i suppose so because the pressure difference is not much they do of course if the result is not good then correct that, that that's why so one has to really balance against causing dissection and getting a good enough dilatation uh, without any residue uh, this is uh, i think probably a cha big challenge okay so uh i'm just doing the post plasty run now with the contrast now we have taken vz pack so now if you see that the residue is also gone looks good and there is no yeah no dissection but it's very important to now see the lower end also whether at the bifurcation is there any embolus or something sitting there okay nahi lena de chale okay so we'll do the run here again fine upon 
looks good. Any comments, uh, uh, Danesh? Anything? No, excellent result. Yes. Uh, I think this turned out to be a relatively simpler case. I think just I will just try and demonstrate uh, where my uh, posterior tibial and uh, the uh, uh, whether there is any improvement in flow. Come a little lower. One minute. Huh? I'll just take the. Yes. Shevachar. No, thoda upar hi deo. Thoda upar hi dikha. Okay. So I'm just going to make a quick run here. We are taking 3, 4 ml of contrast. We have kept the patient very nicely. I did no difference in the... So the ATA is running down well. The peroneal and posterior tibial are the same. <coughs> I am sure I am going to keep a watch on her claudication distance. Can you show the foot picture, please? Yeah, I can show you that. I was avoiding contrast there, but... Huh? Oh, diluted already. Oh. Okay. I will quickly show you the, uh, the uh, foot now. Yeah, this is a diluted contrast, so, <coughs> okay. Could you see that, Danesh? Yeah, patent uh, dorsal spade is nice. Yeah. So but the I plantar think, arch, plantar uh, arch is not being filled up from posteriorly. No. So this is the most is filling important. Up. If that was filling up, I would have attempted. Correct. So it's the most important vessel. Yes. So, uh, you know, while doing this, you always should do the foot uh, angiogram to rule out any embolus which has gone down. If it has gone down, you'll have to go and... Uh, Aspirate. Just a theoretical question, Vimal. Sure. Since this is a single vessel runoff, and uh, when you dilated yes. the lesion in SFA, it opened very easily, which could mean could be just yes. a thrombus sitting there or a soft plaque. Right. So, uh, yes. would it have altered your uh, approach, maybe using a distal protection device? Yes, uh, we have done, uh, we were some of the first few people to use distal protection device in the peripheral. And, uh, uh, you know, as Danesh said, could have been a right way to do that and a safe way to do it. Uh, however, uh, the chances of getting a thrombus down there or a plaque going down there maybe 8 to 10 percent and uh, the cost is uh, definitely an issue. The filter for us in India costs about uh, 75 to 80,000 rupees. So uh, ideally yes, a single vessel runoff is wise to, uh, to put a protection. Excellent now we have result, Vimal. The, uh, crossover sheet back. Yes, thank you very much. Are you going to use a closure uh, device? No, we are not going to use a closure device here um, in this patient. As I said, uh, we are a little constrained on the costing. And uh, so manual compression is what we will go ahead with. Vimal, Ideally, there's yes. a que question from audience. Uh, uh, yes, yes. Did you get that question, Mimal? 
No, I could not hear it. Okay, if there is no digital protection device and uh, thrombus goes into yes. the digital circulation, what are the other means to uh, retract or retrieve that? So what we normally use is the uh, either of these uh, thrombuster, uh, you know, all these aspiration catheter which are over the wire. And we may take a six, MA, a six French or a five French as deep you want to go. So we take a smaller one if you want to go deep. If still that is not successful and then. And then aspirate this thrombus out. Well, uh, that's a different, a definite challenge. We have also used our angiography catheters, which are otherwise 100 centimeter long. In that case, we'll have to make an ipsilateral puncture. What about go thrombolysis? Go and go down into the tibial vessels and aspirate. And uh, thrombolysis, see, finally, you have to realize it that quite often it's a plaque. And uh, plaque will not dissolve with the thrombolytic, uh, thrombolytic agents. So uh, you would start definitely as a defense. But uh, the value we'll have to really uh, consider. But I can tell you that with these uh, coronary aspiration catheters, we've been successful uh, in about 70 to 80 percent of our cases. Any more questions uh, to Vimal? I think we have a sample of the thrombuster here. Just see on the, this thing. I'll just show you which is the catheter. Let me see if I have it. I'll just put it up. There was one out here somewhere. So we do that uh, uh, occasionally. Do you Important have a remember, if you're using a... Yeah. Do you have MR angio pictures? Yeah, sorry. MR angio pictures. Do we have the MR angio picture? For benefit of uh, audience, uh, you know how good uh, it yes. can be, especially when you have CKD patients. Yes. Okay. Uh, do we have the MR here? Uh, you would uh, you would have it on the cell phone. Okay. Yes. Just get it here, close to the... <clears throat> this is on the cell phone that I had uh, sent them the picture. That is a KDA technology? <laughs> That's a KDA technology. <laughs> but uh, 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 really good pictures. You know the new software that we have, though I'm not very good with MR uh, uh, as at the procedure, but uh, the angiography, just show the full angiogram. You show the coronal edge. You can see that on the mobile. The MR plane without contrast has a tendency to exaggerate the lesion. So what you are seeing on MR looks like 100%, maybe about 80 or 90% on the angiogram. The new, new MR that we are getting is uh, just uh, fantastic uh, images. In fact, on Monday, I'm doing another case uh, who has extensive calcification of the aorta and iliac vessels. So I'm going to do an MR for him also and see how calcium is, uh, you know, behaving with the MR uh, angiography. Okay, thank you, Vimal. A fantastic case, nice results. You've thank shown you, uh, whatever needs to be shown. Thank you very much, Danesh. And thank you from uh, Meryl uh, sure, at uh, Bapi. Thank you. Thank you very much, and I would like to thank my team here. I have my uh, technologist, Mr. Praveen, my nursing staff who is here, the one who speaks Malayali and Gujarati both, and my uh, other colleague, Dr. Gordon, was here. Uh, where is he? He's not here? Okay. 
he's uh, very good with his hands so crossing the lesion and all he does it very well and uh, uh, so this this team is excellent i will just try and show you the thrombuster just turn it around i think turn karo usko this is this is the aspiration catheter so thank you very much everyone and uh, i'm sure the conference is there till tomorrow and you enjoy it they would miss this vimal's dance though great thank you very much thank you by doc credence btk and clinical update good evening so uh, i am a vascular surgeon it's probably misfit here in this audience but uh, i think probably the turfs are getting more and more commoner and uh, it's good to work with all the specialties together i do not have any potential uh, conflict of interest uh, i think there are some slides which are going to be repeated i am going to skip this uh, about uh, intuitive desire in stenting uh, across the spectrum and the metal basically is what uh, we do not want to leave behind uh, and uh, my colleague nikhil has already uh, shown the advantages uh, of using uh, bioabsorbable scaffold so this is a credence btk study design uh, which i am one of the pi's and it's a first in man safety and efficacy in patients critical limb ischemia disease due to de novo lesions uh, where the lengths are considered less than or equal to 56 mm and in the bellone anatomical arteries uh, which are treated by credence btk in 30 patient that's the study and the clinical follow up is for from first day to one month six months where the angio is done one year and then subsequently 2 3 for next 5 years uh, double antiplatelets are given for one year and angiographic follow up is done at the end of 6 months and uh, it's a prospective open label single arm study and the clinical endpoints would be absence of clinical complications at one month post procedure a scaffold thrombosis as per the arc definitions up to 5 years and these were the key eligible criteria age more than 18 years stenosis more than 50% or occlusions because of atherosclerotic disease in the bellone arteries length of lesions less than 56 mm and reference vessel diameter of 2.25 to 4.5 mm a maximum of two lesions in one below near vessel were treated in the study or in two vessels of two different legs symptomatic cli rutherford class 4 and 5 and life expectancy of more than 6 months and exclusions were reference segment diameter not suitable for scaffold length of lesion again requiring more than one scaffold implantation previously implanted stents or pta in the same lesion site lesions lying within the or adjacent to an aneurysm inflow limiting arterial lesions left untreated and a patient history of prior life threatening contrast medium reaction and these were the study end points from the safety point of view absence of clinical complications at one month post procedure or a scaffold thrombosis as per the arc definition up to 5 years the performance end points were technical success at 48 hours and clinical success at each follow up limb salvage rates at 6 and 12 months so clinical success during a clinical examination and doing ankle brachial indices limb salvage rates at 6 and 12 months primary patency rates at 1 month and followed by 1 2 3 and up to 5 years tlr that is a target uh, lesion revascularization at 1 month 6 months and up to 5 years and improvement of abi and the angiographic endpoints were late lumen loss diagnosed at 6 months and primary patency at 6 months this some of the examples uh, where where you can see uh, pre procedure complete occlusion of tp trunk and uh, stent being deployed and that's how uh, it's opened up there another one where anti tbl rt uh, has been opened up with a stent and has a nice uh, this is a credence 2.75 by 19 and mosaic uh, non compliant balloon which was used to post dilate 
So it's a fully biodegradable scaffold serolimus eluting uh, PLLA backbone, top coat comprising of serolimus. Uh, Nikhil has already mentioned about the technological aspects. And this is the PROMESA again, is probably will be used in SFA and carotids. So I'm going to uh, show my cases, what we did as a part of this study uh, in three of these patients. Is one Mr. B, who had a CLI with gangrene of the toe, diabetic, and he had a bioabsorber scaffold in TP trunk, and wound, wound healed in one month. And these were these angiography, sorry. So he had a very tapered narrowing of TP trunk, anti-tibial artery was completely occluded after the origin, and that's a peroneal, and the posterior tibial again was occluded. So, in fact, we showed this case uh, in live last, I think probably this year in April, and we tried to open uh, anti-tibial, but uh, we couldn't uh, open anti-tibial because of these collaterals right at the end uh, artery. So all the time the wires were going into collateral, but we couldn't enter the native ATA. And so these were the distal pictures uh, of peroneal feeding into the plantar uh, arteries. And there is a reformation of dorsal spedis artery uh, at the foot and beyond. We didn't uh, basically want to take a retrograde puncture into the uh, dorsal spedis because this thing being a single artery feeding the foot, and had that been closed down, uh, he would have landed with acute ischemia of the foot. So as a surgeon, if we cannot manage endovascularly, I always have an option of doing a bypass going on to dorsal spedis. So we had to leave that patent. And this is where uh, we, uh, the lesion which we had to address with a credence uh, BTK uh, scaffold. So it's a pre-dilatation and then after the stent, after deployed, and that's your final uh, this thing. So this is the stent which is deployed uh, in the distal uh, TP trunk. You can see those markers here and that's the end result here. And these are the distal vessels. So uh, this patient, ultimately, the wounds healed almost after two months. And uh, he has been under follow-up uh, for his, uh, he would be coming for six months angio in another couple of months' time. This is the second patient, diabetic again, gangrene toe. And he had a uh, biobsorbable scaffold in TP trunk. And he also, we also did a angioplasty of anti-tibial and peroneal artery. He had an amputation of toe after the procedure and wound is granulating. Again, this was done about four weeks ago. And these were the pictures. Uh, you can see the anti-tibial two tandem lesions in ATA. Uh, there's a very tight stenosis in the origin of TP trunk. There's a diffusely diseased peroneal artery and there's complete occlusion of posterior tibial artery. The anti-tibial artery is going into the dorsal spedis artery into the foot and peroneal also is giving some collaterals to the, the hill. So we opened the anti-tibial artery uh, with O18 wire and ballooned all the way with the long balloons. These are barred uh, long balloons used. So initially with 2 mm uh, by 200 uh, millimeter length, followed by 2.5 and the entire ATA was opened up. Now you can see there still was some residual uh, lesions in anti-tibial artery, so we had to go all the way up to three millimeters of uh, uh, balloon uh, diameter to open that AT and then it's nicely opened up. So the next was to open the peroneal artery, that is again wire got into peroneal and that's ballooned with a long 2.5 mm uh, 200 balloon and the peroneal is nicely opened up. And then we had to address the origin of TP trunk stenosis with a credence BTK uh, so this is a pre-dilatation and then post-dilatation and this is a stent deployed, a scaffold, and that's the end result here. So that's end result of TP trunk and ATA and peroneal. And that's going down into the foot all the way, uh, supplying the dorsal spedis and the plantar arch. So obviously, I expect these wounds to heal. He's already started granulating after the amputation of toe. I'm sure another couple of weeks' time, uh, his wounds would heal. That's the third patient, diabetic, 
amputation uh, of the toe and wounds were not healing. So he required SFA stent and uh, bioabsorbable scaffold in distal popliteal artery. His wound healed in three months' time. And these were the pictures. So that's a total occlusion of uh, mid-SFA, which was opened uh, with 018 wire, and the wire was brought down. And this is where the picture of narrowing of the distal popliteal artery. Again, he had anti-tibial and posterior which were occluded, only peroneal runoff. You can see peroneal. This is a posterior tibial, but there was no origin of posterior tibial where we could enter, and the posterior tibial was filling into the foot. So we opened uh, the SFA, I did a pre-dilatation, and then brought the long catheter uh, into the distal, uh, dis proximal popliteal, and this is the lesion we had to open up. We tried to open this posterior tibial, but we failed. Wire wouldn't go beyond this. But since it was in continuation of peroneal, we thought we should open the distal uh, popliteal, and that's a wire being attempted to open the posterior tibial. So there is a. Then we did a dilatation of distal popliteal artery just above the TP trunk. And that's credence uh, 4 by 37 biabsorbable scaffold deployed into the artery just above the TP trunk. And that's the end result uh, after deploying the and post dilatation of biabsorbable scaffold. These are the, and then subsequently we uh, dilated, uh, stented the SFA because there was a dissection after balloon, uh, prolonged balloon dilatation. So the SFA was stented. And that's a final picture of popliteal with a biabsorbable scaffold here. And then runoff again peroneal going into the foot through the collaterals into posterior tibial. So this is the patient we could uh, review uh, after six months. We had to do an angiography. By then his wounds have healed completely. He had totally asymptomatic. But as a part of protocol, six months angiography was done. So S, which angiography showed that there was an instant, sorry, instant stenosis of the superficial femoral artery stent. So we had to balloon dilate it. And the, the scaffold which was kept in the distal popliteal has remained patent. So this whole thing, we had to redilate the stent because of the instant restenosis. Uh, but what was really interesting and uh, in that the biazor scaffold remained patent at the six months. So this was a pre-procedure uh, lesion in the distal popliteal that was following putting a biazor scaffold uh, day one, and this is after six months. So when we look at the international data, uh, considering these, there are two or three trials which have come very recently in 2016 and 17. One is the ESPRI-1 trial, and this was a two-year uh, data from Lamar et al., which is published in JACC in 2016. And the only everolimus coated uh, biabsorbable stent. There was no recoil. Binary restenosis was almost 12% at one year and 16% at two years. And the target uh, lesion revascularization is 8.8% one year and 11.8% by year two, which is fantastic results. There are no safety concerns. Now, when we look at or compare the previous trials, that is the Remedy BVS trial or uh, Tamai uh, BVS trial, the difference that those trials did not have any drug-coated uh, biosable scaffolds, whereas this trial, Esprit, then uh, Absolute, uh, BTK, and now this also, Merrill, uh, they all have a drug-coated uh, biabsorbable scaffolds uh, because so remedy showed a very high TLR and restenosis, uh, which is why uh, it, were, it really went out of work. But then these new studies are very encouraging. This is absorbed BTK from Raymond Walker, uh, Australia. Again, uh, published in 2016, JSCC, 38 limbs of CLI. All these basically studies were open-labeled uh, studies. Mean length of the lesions were 19 millimeters. The clinical improvement was found in almost 80%, and binary restenosis was 6%, primary patency fantastic 96% uh, at uh, 12 months, going down to 84% at uh, two years. 
and the important thing, freedom from the almost 96 percent. Now, when we look at uh, or when we treat the baloney lesions, the real world scenario is that the baloney disease is diffuse rather than focal stenotic segments. And to address that, uh, this disappear study, which was done by Stephen Combe in Singapore, Changi, uh, this was drug impregnated bioabsorbable stent in Asian population extremity arterial revascularization. This was presented uh, this year in Link. Uh, Infrapopulated stent uh, with Everolimus uh, BVS by Abbott. 28 patients out of those 89 percent diabetics, they all had 100 percent CLI. 50 stains were in 38, 31 lesions, out of which 7 of 22 had occlusions, total occlusions. The median length of the stains we used about 28 mm. And primary patency was 93 percent uh, at one year and six months, 87, 87 percent. And freedom from TLR almost was 96 percent at uh, six months. Limb salvage at six months was 96 percent. So it's a fantastic. So I think from baloney uh, disease, which is can be diffused, I think the solutions are changing from long balloons, maybe drug coated uh, stains for a very focal lesions, but now we are getting bioabsorbable scaffolds with drug coating, and that probably could uh, answer uh, lots of questions in near future. Thank you. Any, any questions for Dr.